In this video, I'm going to show how you can use a see-through or cutout material to make a realistic looking representation on your 3D model instead of using complex geometry. So let's take a look. So in this video, I'm going to show how you can use see-through materials or cutout materials to create a realistic representation of a complex material such as the speaker grill instead of creating a pattern in a sketch or in 3D and trying to copy that and pattern that just to make these little speaker grill holes, we're gonna use an appearance to make the rendering look much better. Okay, so I'm gonna start with this Sono speaker that I downloaded off of GrabCAD. Um, it's got a couple different bodies in here. Uh, the one I'm curious about is this one here, it's body six. So I'm gonna go ahead and isolate this. So we're just kind of working with this, basically it's a shell. I'm gonna switch over to the rendering workspace because I think it's a little bit easier to see what's going on in the rendering workspace. And we want to work with the appearance. So I'm gonna click on appearance. And the material that we're gonna be working with is under the metal subsection and then steel. And you'll notice that there's a bunch of different materials in here. For example, mesh expanded thick. If I just drag that on there, we can kind of see what this looks like and already you can see that we're looking through the material. It's almost like it's a metal wastebasket, for example. Um, mesh expanded thin, you can kind of see the different materials we have. Now we're gonna talk about the alignment of the material here in just a little bit. I'm gonna keep scrolling down. Um, we got like diamond plate, etc. cetera. Um, but I want this steel hexagonal mesh. So I'm gonna drag that on there. And this is kind of the speaker grill shape that I want to use. I'm gonna go ahead and delete all the other ones um, that we don't need. So here is that steel hexagonal mesh. If I right click and say edit, I can change the scale. So I wanna go down, let's go down to maybe something like um, 42 in this case. And now if I zoom up on it, you can kind of see what that mesh looks like. Now here's the issue with this, and it's kind of hard to see. Um, I'm gonna zoom in and kind of rotate at a slight angle like so. And then I'm gonna hit render. And you'll notice it almost looks like it's doubled up when I'm hitting render. And that's because the material is assigned to the outside and also to the inside of this body. And if we take a look at this, there's actual thickness to this body. It's a little hard to see, but you can kind of see there's some, some thickness. So one of the tips I wanted to share is when you're doing these cutout materials, it's almost best to use thin walled surfaces instead of bodies. So to do that, I'm gonna switch into my surface tab and create an offset. And if I just click on one of these surfaces, it's gonna chain all the way around because they're tangential. I'll say okay, and I get this surface body. I'll go ahead and turn off body six, and we're left with this thin wall. There's absolutely no thickness to it whatsoever. Okay, so I'll jump back into render and I'll show you the next issue that we're gonna run into and how to resolve that. So here's our, our mesh. Material, I'm gonna drag that on there. And as we take a look at this, we can kind of see we get a nice result, except right here in the corner, it doesn't really line up. And this is where the front face starts to join the other, kind of like the side face. So if I come in here, we have texture map controls. And you'll notice it says, what's the selection? Well, it's selecting the whole thing and the projection type is automatic. Well, that doesn't give me any control over like moving any of this stuff around. So I'm gonna try something like planar, for example, and now it's asking for an axis. I can specify uh, an axis on here. Let me go ahead and turn on like my origin and let's just pick um, like this axis here. But now you're gonna see some weird stuff happening where it looks good from the front but it does not look good from the side because it's basically wrapping this image around this front face. 
So planar doesn't work. I'll go ahead and try box. So box looks pretty good. We can see how it's wrapping around, uh, but then we get this little edge right here that's kind of missing. But once again, I don't have the ability to kind of move it around. If if I grab this, you'll see, and again, it's kind of hard to, to visualize. Um, you can kind of see how it's moving this surface here. And I can sort of line that up like so. And I'm kind of looking at this area right here. So you can kind of see if it looked kind of weird like that, I'm just going to drag this back until it kind of lines up and looks pretty good. So we're looking at it from the front and from the side, it looks pretty good. Um, but then we run into the issue over here. Now, if you're rendering this from just one direction, this probably doesn't matter too much. You could probably get away with the box texture map controls. If you want to view it from multiple different angles and have different renderings, then we're going to have to do something a little bit different because as you can see, it doesn't look good right here. So texture map control is your friend in certain situations, but what we're going to have to do is actually break this up into multiple surfaces and then we can use the planar texture map. So I'm going to go into surface, unstitch, and I'll draw a box around the whole thing and watch what happens to this body 20. When I say unstitch, it now becomes individual little panels all the way around. These are individual little faces all the way around. Now, if I jump back into rendering, like I said, I think it's a little bit easier to kind of see in rendering. I now have control over each of these panels. So check this out. I'm going to say texture map control. Now this one looks good and, and this one here looks good. We can kind of see what that looks like. Uh, maybe I'll click on this one here and I'm going to say planar and you can see how it kind of shifted it over a little bit. I'll pick my axis. Let's turn on the origin really quick. And we want to look in that direction. So I'm going to pick this green axis line. And then what that allows me to do is to grab this arrow and slide this mesh where I want that to be. So I might zoom up right here and let's just move that over a little bit and move that up a little bit. Now, You'll notice it's not lining up, so I'm going to set this also to be planar because right now it's set to automatic. So I'm going to just go ahead and say OK. Texture map will set, or that's set to box, so let's go ahead and set it to planar. We'll specify our axis looking straight at it, and now you can kind of see those line up a little bit better. We'll do something like this to kind of make that look more realistic. I'll say OK. And now you can't even see that seam of where those two panels are touching. And then I'll do the same thing over here. I'm just going to kind of work my way around. So I'll say I want to texture map this kind of side face here. We want it to be planar. I'll specify the axis. This time it's a little bit more planar this direction. So I'm going to click this red line. And now I can use these arrows to kind of move and make it match a little bit nicer in this corner. Now it is going to wrap ever so slightly, like it's bending the material around the corner, but you can kind of see how we can get pretty close. Let me find my arrows again. We can get pretty close and line up these triangles here. Say OK, and you can't see that edge anymore as it wraps around the corner. It's actually right there, and you probably wouldn't even notice that. And again, I would just rinse and repeat. I would just keep working my way around, um, especially if I needed to be concerned um, that I want to render all the way around. But in this case, I might be just doing uh, like a front render, maybe from like this direction here. So I do want to make sure that this panel here looks good. So let me just do one more. I'll say planar. And now we've lined up that panel there and you can't even tell where it is. Okay, now I can go ahead and turn on all of the rest of the bodies. I'll leave body six turned off. And here is what that final 
representation looks like. I also created a uh, decal with the Sonos logo on there. And let's just throw maybe a table on there to create a realistic looking environment. Um, and I'll just hit render really quick. Let's just see what this looks like. And we can see how it's creating that mesh style material. Now, if I were to turn off body 10, you're gonna actually be able to see all the way through and you can see the table through that material. In fact, if I uh, zoom up down here near the bottom and let it render, you can see how you're seeing through the material and you can see the base and you can see the table in the background. So that is the see-through or cut-out material. So you might be asking, how do you create your own see-through or cut-out material? Well, to do that, let's go ahead and edit the existing steel hexagonal mesh. I'll go ahead and say edit, click on advanced, and here we can see the relief pattern and the cutout. And you can kind of see the images that they're using for both of those. And this cutout is the magic that's happening. So anything that's black is see-through and anything that's white um, blocks us being able to see through it. So all we need to do is replace these images with an image of our liking. So I have an image that I found online that kind of looks like this. That's what we're going to end up using. If I hit this little down arrow, I can say edit image and then pick on the source and pick the perforated material. And I'll do the same thing down here. I'll click on the source. And we've just replaced those uh, two images with the images that we want to use. I'll go ahead and say OK. And we can see how it's updated this material here. Now it's pretty small, so we're going to change the scale of this. So let's edit and drag the scale to something a little bit larger, maybe something like this, for example. Um, I'm also going to make it so it's not quite so shiny. We'll do something like that say OK. And as we look at this, we can see we have a slight mismatch because it's a different material, but we already know how easy and quick it is to fix that just by clicking on the texture map controls. I'll grab that panel there and let's just kind of slide this up or down a little bit until they line up uh, or look fairly close like that. And now you can't even tell where it wraps around those two panels. I've also added a uh, Sonos logo and a table just to make it look a little bit more realistic. Um, and I like to create my own custom environment. So I'm going to select this custom environment here and pick an HDRI that I downloaded off of the internet. Um, I've done videos in the past on using custom HDRIs to make more realistic looking renderings. So here you can see we're using this bathroom 4K. And now when I uh, come in here, we're going to see, uh, let me just change the position. We're going to see um, more impressive lighting, uh, more realistic lighting, especially like on these reflective materials. And it's going to create a more realistic rendering for us. So I might move this until I kind of see um, kind of the highlights that I like. Let's just do something like that and do an in canvas render. And now we can kind of see as it's rendering, we get like realistic um, reflections from the windows, from the HDRI image. We're getting reflections from the speaker. We can see our new speaker grill pattern, what it looks like uh, on the Sonos speaker. So hopefully you learned that you didn't have to create a complex pattern in a sketch or in 3D to create a realistic representation for your design for rendering. I hope you learned something new and enjoyed that video. If you did, make sure you like and subscribe to be notified of upcoming videos. If you need help learning Fusion, visit my webpage at cadedllc.com. And as always, have fun learning Fusion.